is happy to answer them. And you can also type in the chat and I'm happy to read them. So, yeah. And I do apologize. I'm not coming to you live from lab today. Uh, IT was doing network maintenance. And so I would have been kicked off online at about 6.30, 10 minutes from now. So I had to take this uh, from home, but I have some good stuff to share with you guys. So uh, let me share my screen and then we'll get started. So, uh, oh, it's hiding the presentation button. There we go. Um, <laughs> So as pretty mentioned, I'm from CSU Chico. Uh, well, that's where I graduated in 2018 with a Bachelor of Science in Mechatronic, but I went to Cabrillo. I actually went back to Cabrillo in uh, 2010 after a long stint in business and real estate and financing. Um, and it, it took me a little bit to get back in the swing of things. Uh, I had to you know, take a bunch of math classes and stuff like that. So I don't know how many of you are fresh out of high school and how many are returning students, but for all the returning students out there, um, stick with it. I know it might be hard, but you'll get so much more out of it this time around. Um, uh, so I work at Omron Robotics and Safety Technology as an application engineer on collaborative robots. Collaborative robots are just kind of a new thing in the industry. It helps uh, robots and people work side by side without a lot of uh, large safety equipment and safety guarding and stuff like that. Uh, I work as a system engineer on mainly what we call fixed robotics. Omron is a global company established May uh, 1933. They have a very large net sales yearly, uh, 28,000 employees worldwide. Uh, so it's a fun company to work for and really a lot of things going on. They're in the healthcare industry, automotive uh, and robotics and safety technologies. So the building I work in mainly deals with fixed and mobile robotics. Uh, as you can see, Ascara on the left and a mobile robot on the mobile platform on the right. Uh, we also do uh, uh, what we call the Quattro and Hornet parallel robots as opposed to serial link robots. Uh, and the one on the left with four arms is actually currently the fastest robot in the world. Um, so that's really something uh, that we can be proud of. We offer mobile robots uh, in the range from 60 kilograms all the way up to 1500 kilograms. That one, the big one on the right can actually carry a payload of 1500 kilograms. It's pretty impressive. Uh, and that's actually one of our newest offerings. Um, but the ones I deal with <clears throat> are these uh, six axis uh, serial, link pair, uh, serial link collaborative robots. Uh, and they're really good for many different things in industry uh, like assembly, picking and placing, dispensing, palletizing, um, pretty much anywhere you kind of need to work side by side with a person. Um, a little note at the bottom here says, industrial robots don't care if you're standing in its way. Well, that's actually really true. A collaborative robot uh, will still kind of bump into you, but it'll stop and say, sorry. Whereas an industrial robot typically will just go right through you. Um, so these, these things are really taking over in the marketplace and becoming quite ubiquitous. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a returning student with a business background and um, what led me to Chico State actually was that I was at Cabrillo for a while and was considering UCSC. Uh, they have a pretty neat exoskeleton program, um, but Chico State is actually one of only three, uh, at last check anyway, one of only three ABET accredited engineering programs with mechatronic degrees in the country. The other two being uh, MIT, uh, I think MIT, and also Carnegie Mellon. Um, so it's a pretty uh, exclusive club to belong to. Um, and during my time at Chico, I knew the importance of being on an engineering club. Uh, that's where you get really to put the put into practice what you learn in class and work on projects. Chico State's a great school. Uh, I may, may be a little biased having gone there, but <laughs> it's a very hands-on school. Um, you learn a lot. You don't just do theory. Uh, and Chico State students are actually really valued in the Bay Area uh, as engineers because they know that we have practical experience. Um, that, that school is really a student-run student school. It's really great. Um, and why I chose Mechatronics is going out of business, I really kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to do. It's hard sometimes to, to find out what we want to do, but it's always very easy to know what we don't want to do. Uh, so I did a bunch of things that I thought maybe I wanted to do or just didn't want to do and eliminated a lot of that uh, very quickly and very easily, which led me to engineering. I always liked being hands-on. Um, and I knew that robotics and industrial automation was kind of the future in this country. Um, you know, I was kind of really forward thinking. So I chose mechatronics and I knew that I, I'd probably have a really good job no matter where I wanted to be, um, which is true. You can go almost anywhere in the world right now and be a collaborative robot engineer and easily have a job. Um, here's some uh, images of my time at Baja. Um, 
actually, incidentally, I also founded the Cabrillo Robotics team. Um, if any of you are on that, uh, say hi to say hi to anybody there for me that might still be there from my time. Um, but being on a club is really a great way to not only network, but like I said, put into practice what you learn in class, um, which is what hiring managers are looking for most these days. Like they just want to know what you've done and what you're passionate about. Um, robots in real life. So as we all know, with the COVID pandemic going on, uh, a lot of our robots are being used as room service, medical transport, uh, and especially disinfection, which they were actually testing in lab today. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, that's kind of the end of my slideshow, but I do have some other things I want to share with you guys. Uh, one of the nice things about working at a large company is you get to be YouTube famous. So this is a project I worked on uh, for a video shoot with a new screwdriver that we offer uh, from OnRobot. A lot of companies right now are strictly developing end effectors for collaborative robots. And this one here, we're looking at actually putting into use on our production floor. So not only do we make the robots, we use them to make the other equipment that we make in the factory. And I won't bore you with too long of a video, but uh, that was really fun. It was a really fun project to work on. Um, being a mechatronic engineer, you get to do a lot of different things. I think mechatronics is sort of becoming the de facto engineering kind of base, um, whereas me mechanical will specialize in a lot more. Um, maybe industrial uh, manufacturing, manufacturing engineers excuse me, will specialize a lot more. Mechatronics, you get to do design. So I use SolidWorks a lot. Uh, I get to do electronics, um, you know, just little soldering, circuitry, wiring, things like that. I get to do uh, mechanical design um, and I get to do software programming. So it's really diverse and gives me a lot of opportunity to do different things every day so I don't get bored. And, and what was the application of that robot? So it can just put screws in everywhere that you need them? Is that what that... Yeah, so this particular one, um, the end effector is a screwdriver from a company called OnRobot, and it uses a combination with a screw presenter, so a place to pick the screw up from that's a known location, um, and just goes to a couple of top points, um, uses a landmark there for vision, so it has uh, an orientation of that part every time in a nice fixture, and yeah, it just kind of uh, screws in, you know, things that can do, it can work 24-7, so it can work it doesn't get sick and it just kind of helps out with production. Um, it's really nice for companies that have small workforces, um, do a high mix of low volume jobs um, because it's quickly and easily repro re reprogrammable. God, that's a hard one. <laughs> but pretty, you had mentioned um, bionics and uh, biomimicry. Yeah. And I mentioned that I got into mechatronics because I saw that as the future of robotics. Well, the future in another 10 years is <clears throat> gonna be, I think, bionics biomimicry. So I wanted to share with you guys this company here uh, called Festo, which does amazing, amazing things. Festo as a company actually just makes uh, pneumatic solenoids. That's their bread and butter. But they also have a research and development arm that makes bionics. Um, and they actually have a, Get away, get away. I need my screen back. There we go. Uh, they actually have a, uh, here's a little something you can read up on Bionics, but they have next. Come on. There we go. They have an educational kit. And I wanted to bring this up because um, I haven't in the past, but knowing that there's a robotic club at Cabrillo and knowing that Festo has a Bionics kit. I think that maybe that's something you guys should look at. Is um, that um, also, something that people would buy from them? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a good question. It's I'm not sure if it's something they offer as a STEM kit for purchase or just for um, donation, you know, for maybe just to offer. Um, but if you need help looking into that pretty, let me know. I can maybe help you out there. Okay. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll pass that on to Joanne and then we'll take it yeah. from there. Yeah. That'd be great. So another uh, future uh, robotics area is soft robotics. Um, again, working closely with people, um, picking things like tomatoes, uh, soft fruits like strawberries. Uh, robotics are really getting big in that area as well. Um, and let's see. 
Oh, I wanted to share with you guys a couple of resources too. Um, I haven't done this in the past, but uh, this really got me through college. And I know you guys are just starting out. Um, <clears throat> some of you may be returning. So it's been a while since you've taken a math class, right? This guy, Patrick JMT, Just Math Tutorials, is really, really got me through uh, a lot of my math classes at Cabrillo and at Chico State. Um, another one is uh, a YouTube channel called Structure Free. This, uh, this, these guys deal a lot in uh, statics. So I know you, some of you guys will be taking, um, what was it, Engineering 25? Uh, no, 35, 35. 35. Okay. Um, uh, and another uh, thing that I like to just kind of keep on top of, Science Daily is a really great resource for <clears throat> seeing what is coming out in the world. So this website aggregates all of the research papers from around, mm -hmm. um, uh, from university, from basically academia, and <clears throat> kind of summarizes it and disseminates it in an easy to easy to digest manner. But it's everything that's kind of super future, right? This is uh, theoretical. It's R and D. It's only in academia right now, so it hasn't even made it out to research departments. Um, and they have specifically a robotics page where you can just kind of keep up to date on what's going to be the biggest thing in robotics in the next five, 10, 15 years. And the last thing I want to share with you is just a fun video of <clears throat> my time on the Baja team. So as I mentioned, Chico State's a, really a student-run school, <clears throat> especially the engineering department. Uh, we had access to the machine shop. They actually had to make rules that we couldn't be in the machine shop from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, because of how often that we were just working on our Baja car and in there every day. And, um, so not only do you get to really learn hands-on at Chico State, um, and, and I got on this team actually because it was one of the few engineering clubs on campus that was ready to go when I was ready to go. Even though my degree was gonna be mechatronics and I thought it'd be really great to get a robotics club. Um, this gave me hands-on experience with manufacturing, with machining, which is something that I had considered and something I always looked at doing. Um, and maybe that's something you guys wanna go. Manufacturing engineering is a great, great area to go into. Uh, so. My final year, I actually incorporated uh, data acquisition onto the Baja car, um, put a lot of sensors on the car and took what I learned from my mechatronics program um, and applied that to the Baja vehicle so that we could validate our engineering design choices, right? Which uh, really the judges really like to see that. Um, so through a program like the Baja SAE program or Formula SAE, uh, you really get access to huge, huge resources of people in the industry. Like four of our uh, four of our members this year um, that you're seeing here went to work for Volvo Trucks Group uh, on the East Coast for a summer internship. Um, one of the guys right now uh, just accepted an internship to Honda R and D. Um, and so, if you're into vehicles, or even if you're not, this may be a really good thing to go into. I know that uh, AI, uh, self-driving vehicles, AI things like that, machine vision um, are really big in vehicles. So. There's a lot, a lot of opportunity in mechatronics in general. Um, and I think I'll end it there and open it up for questions. This probably gave you a lot of experience uh, that you could then relay to future employers and say, oh, you know, I've done this. Was that yeah. kind of how things went? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of emphasis is put on grades and everything like that. And grades are a really important part of it. Um, it makes sure that you're doing your work and, you know, you pass tests and you kind of know the, know the material. But what hiring managers are really looking for is what you're passionate about and what you have done, right? So uh, if you don't get an internship for one summer, just uh, get a small Arduino kit and hack away on that all summer, um, you know? Learn that. Uh, even as a mechanical, straight mechanical engineer, it's important to know some programming, uh, have some experience with that, at least one software language. So Arduino is a really great, great way to get into it. And, and our the Career Robotics Club could help you guys do that. Also, if maybe you don't have money for our Arduino, they have those parts. So uh, clubs are just a really, really great resource. Wow, look at all those different... Um... Cars. Um, does anyone have, else have questions for Aaron? Um, I have a couple of questions. Absolutely. Um, what's like? What, what's the budget that you guys get for some of those cars? Uh, so this uh, this program, we actually had to raise all the money ourselves. So it's solely dependent on how hard you want to hustle. Um, I think this year we had something like a forty thousand dollar budget. 
Um, a lot of the stuff was donated. Um, a lot of students' time and energy put into this. Um, this competition was actually held during finals week, um, the last two days of finals week. So we all had to uh, move all of our finals up to the first three days so we could attend the competition. Um, and not only are we trying to study for finals, but we're trying to build a car and finish a car that we're a little bit behind on because uh, life. So um, it's, it's a lot of hustle, a lot of hard work, but the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. We raced actually against 100 other teams from around the world uh, in three different competitions. You guys, you, um, oh, go ahead, Loki. Go ahead, Loki. Um, you guys like build the engines from scratch, or do you just like take it out of something else and throw it in there? So the engine is the only thing that we cannot touch. Actually, the the Baja SAE rules are a little different than the Formula rules. We're given a 10 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine that every team has to use, um, and so it's really level playing field as far as that. And it all comes down to um, how well the car handles and mostly how light it is um, because a low horsepower engine uh, really can't move a lot of mass very quickly. But the formula team um, that raced a little mini formula one car, they get to pick their own engine, design it, um, boost it however they want to tune it, however they want to. Um, and they have a lot more flexibility there. That's super cool. Um, it I'm was really, really cool. If that's okay. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Say that again. Do you guys like do internships at the place you work at? We do, yeah. Um, actually, let me bring uh, this back up. So if you go just search for Omron, jo Omron Jobs online, um, should be the first one you come to. Um, LinkedIn obviously is a really great place as well, but you can search by location and Americas. Um, and we currently have, so, uh, as I mentioned, Omron's a large company. They have a healthcare business, electronic components. Uh, Pleasanton office I work in is the robotics and safety technologies. And currently we have 44 open positions in the US, um, engineering, uh, summer intern, software engineers, one of the very first ones. So we've also got in, uh, internships in mechanical engineering and uh, embedded systems, I believe. Super cool. Electrical engineering and embedded systems. Um, I, I had a question for you too, Aaron, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, as somebody working in like robotics, uh, I guess this might be more of like a moral question, but um, what what's your opinion as far as, you know, robotics taking over the, the jobs of actual humans doing that job? And the, what what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think that's a lot of hype from a lot of different areas. Um, what robotics does is actually retrain people to do things that are maybe dangerous um, and become higher skilled, higher paid work laborers, right? So now instead of becoming just a grunt guy digging the ditch, you are an operator, right? And you get paid more for that. So maybe there aren't as many operator jobs available, but it does give people a chance to retrain, retool. Um, obviously, uh, with a lot of a lot more robots out there, you're going to need people to service those robots as well. Um, so I think it really doesn't uh, doesn't lose jobs. It creates more high skilled jobs, high paying jobs, than it really displaces. Right on. Thanks, man. My pleasure. Do we have other questions? Well, I was going to ask: Are you still involved with the? Um, the, the Baja team in any way? Uh, a little bit. I like to keep in touch. Um, occasionally guys reach out to me for internships or jobs, opportunities when they're getting ready to graduate. Um, I donate a little bit. Now that I uh, have a good paying job, I'm able to donate to the club, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, a little bit. Um, occasionally they will call and ask, you know, a uh, question if they have uh, like a history question. Or, hey, I want to know what happened during that year and stuff like that. Sure. So, I try to keep in touch and I try to get up there every once in a while and see my old professors and meet some of the new faces so that I have a continuing, you know, kind of connection with them. Um, oh, that's actually, great. I to try to get down to Cabrillo toward the end of your semester as well. Oh yeah. Although no one's on campus yet. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Um, we, we can all Super meet on campus. campus. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be wonderful. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to jump in anytime. I was going to ask Aaron to talk about, um, I, I was going to say, was Omron your first job? 
Um, no, it wasn't actually. So um, right out of college, I, I was get, okay, getting ready to graduate. Um, don't know where I want to go, where I want to live, all that. So uh, a lot of my friends put out like hundreds of resumes, you know, um, and I was really more laser focused. So, you know, so I knew that I wanted to kind of stay around where I grew up, Santa Cruz, Bay Area ish. Um, and so I found a company, uh, actually a guy that came and talked to one of my classes. Um, one of the last semester classes I took was a motion control class. Um, and he, this company builds uh, motion controllers. So he came up and gave us a one day seminar training on how to use his motion controller. And we made motors move and did all kinds of neat stuff. And afterwards, I went up and I thanked him for coming. And I was one of only two people that did out of the whole 40 person class. Um, I invited him, uh, stayed in touch, invited him to our senior design fair. Um, and he liked what we did. So we had a kind of an impromptu um, interview right after the design fair. Uh, and he liked what I had to say. So he offered me a job. Uh, and I went to work for him for about six months, um, but it was a very small company, a real startup kind of garage type operation. Um, and uh, it, I, I like being on a team. Uh, I don't know if you may have noticed that, but I really like working on a team of people. Um, and so Amran offered me a, just a better kind of fit for me. Um, some people might be more interested in wearing a bunch of hats and uh, working in a very small company, having really high visibility. In a larger company, you get lost a little bit, but you have a lot more support and a lot more resources available. So it's a lot of fun. Plus, we work with uh, really big companies, and occasionally I get to go on site to, you know, say Tesla or uh, a Nestle factory or something like that. Cool. Wow. How fun. Yeah. And through the pandemic, you've been able to be at work, I would imagine, because your work is so hands on. I have actually, um, my work is very hands-on. The first couple months we were <clears throat> offsite and my, yeah, my production was really kind of like half. So I need my, I need access to hardware, whereas software developer may be able to work from anywhere in the world remotely full time. Um, so I've actually been going into lab uh, every day since like last July, June, July. Um, and my lab is, I'm very fortunate that uh, I'm one of only two or three people in the lab at any one time. And it's a very large lab, so very easy to distance. Uh, and we haven't had any problems, knock on wood. Great. Okay, um, other questions for Aaron? And if you guys think of something later, feel free to uh, search me on LinkedIn, hit me up there, connect and you know, ask me any questions you have. You can email me anytime. We have a very quiet group tonight, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably late. People are maybe hungry and tired or something. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it works. Well, thank you yeah. so much for joining us, Aaron. My and pleasure. Sharing with us about um, the work you do. It's really exciting to hear. My pleasure. And uh, have fun, everybody. Have a great semester. Hope to talk to you soon.